Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to go over a video on how I automated a supply chain using Amazon Web Services, machine learning, and then Python script. I want this to be a brief overview of how I did it, not necessarily a tutorial on how to do it. So if you have questions on what I did specifically, please let me know in the comments below. If this video gets enough traction, I'll be sure to make a full tutorial on how I did everything. So if you're interested in that, please hit the like button below. There's four main steps that I followed to implement a supply chain machine learning algorithm. The first is the data. Everything that you do with machine learning comes from the data. If you don't have a data collection system, then there's no way that you're ever going to be able to use that data to predict. So the first requirement is that you have a way to collect data in your working environment. The second step that I followed is data cleaning or feature engineering as machine learning engineers call it. What this means is that you have to figure out the good data from the bad data. This means that you have to figure out a way to understand your system enough to only use the good data in training your model. The third step is picking the actual machine learning method that we want to use. There's a ton of different algorithms out there and you have to find one that fits your problem. The fourth step is visualization of your results. You need to be able to look through the results of your machine learning algorithm, find the ones that are important to you, and act on those very quickly. I'll try to cover all these steps very briefly in this video. If you want a full tutorial, please let me know down below. The first thing we need to look at is our data collection. So for me, the data that I had working in the supply chain was the consumption of a raw material given by the part numbers up here each month, denoted by the month on the index column. So for example, our part number 013607 in the month of July 2011 consumed 41,360. So essentially, I have a time series for each of these part numbers. I have this data for multiple years and a lot of part numbers. Zooming out, we can see just how big this data set is. The way that we personally got this data was through SAP. We just exported monthly the raw material consumption for each part number and put it into this spreadsheet. Step number two, the data cleaning and feature engineering is a tough one for us. Since we're working in a supply chain, if there's any demand, we need to be able to cover it. We don't want to fall below any number of our predicted demand in the future. That means that we want to have a complete customer availability and be ready to make whatever product that our customer wants. So even though some of these columns are very sparsely used, we still need to keep them in our set. Although a machine learning algorithm may not be too accurate in predicting this time series, we still need to give it a chance. For the third step, picking the algorithm that we want to use, I picked the deep AR forecasting algorithm through AWS. I'll try to very briefly explain why I picked this one using a graphic on the screen, but please know that there's a lot more that goes into this selection. Compared to other machine learning algorithms, the deep AR algorithm from AWS actually takes into account every time series in the set. So instead of using an algorithm like a REMA, which just takes in one time series and predicts off it, the deep AR actually takes into account every time series in the set and makes one big model to predict the outcomes of each time series using one singular model. For the visualization of the data, I used a Jupyter Notebook. In a Jupyter Notebook, you're able to execute Python code and collaborate with others. This is exactly what I needed for this project, so that's why I picked this. There's other options that you can pick for this as well. Google Collab is one that you might consider too. So now let's get into the specifics. How can we do it? The first thing that we need to do is to load in our Excel data into an Amazon S3 bucket. Amazon S3 is just a simple storage solution. And what that means is that you just put in files here and then you can actually access these files from other Amazon services. So I've created a bucket and then I've placed in the Excel sheet into the bucket. Next, we need to use Amazon's machine learning platform, which is called SageMaker. In SageMaker, I just created a notebook that will hold my Python code. These notebooks are just Jupyter notebooks, so that means that we can collaborate with other users in these. The way that our data will flow is that we will take the data from the S3 bucket that we just placed in, feed it into SageMaker, and then take the output data from SageMaker and feed that back into an Excel sheet and place that into an S3 bucket. Once we place that Excel sheet into an S3 bucket, we're able to download it and then we can use it in our own Python script to manipulate the values into graphs. Opening up the notebook, we'll look at the code a little bit, but if you want a full tutorial on this, be sure to like the video. So essentially we feed in all the packages that we want to use and then we import our data here. So we say that our bucket is here and then we specify where it is within the bucket and then we load it in. We also designate an output path here. So we say this is where we want the output of our data to go. Now we had to set some hyperparameters. So here I've set frequency as a month using the character M. And I'll talk about this at the end of the video, but there's some improvements that can be made if you're trying to do this for yourself. I have a prediction length of five. So this is saying that I want to predict five months into the future 
and then a context length of 12. A context length is just how many frequencies you want to look back. So I'm saying I want to look back 12 months into the past. However, these algorithms automatically take into account seasonality, so 12 months is more than enough for this application. Once we load the data in, we just need a simple check to make sure that it's input correctly. Here, I've done that with just putting in a graph. Next, we can create the time series. There's a few more complex operations that are happening in here, but we won't go through them in depth. All we're doing here is formatting our Excel data into a way that the SageMaker can read it in. Once we have the data formatted into a form that we can read it, we need to specify our estimator. An estimator is just the type of machine learning algorithm that you want to use. Here, we're specifying deep AR. Here are the hyperparameters that I've set for this project. Obviously, if you have more epochs, then your script is most likely going to be better, and that's one change that I would make to this. The data I was working with, though, was very large, and we found out that everything past 80 was not necessarily beneficial. Since we were looking at thousands and thousands of pounds of these raw materials. We just needed to be in the ballpark. Additionally, there was a lot more work that went into these hyperparameters, so be sure to look at these whenever you're trying to apply this for yourself. When using these Amazon algorithms, they create an endpoint. An endpoint just starts up, that way you can make live predictions from your model. Here, we're defining the predict function that we're going to use. This is just copy and pasted from Amazon, and then our prediction times are a little modified for a specific case. Once we execute our predict function here, we'll return graphs that look like this. So the blue is the target, which is the actual values that we put in. And then the prediction median is what it actually predicted to happen in that month. Lastly, since I didn't denote a risk assessment for these items, I tried to have different levels of the raw material that I would need for the different confidence levels. Although I didn't denote this specifically in the Python script, if there was a critical raw material that I knew that we often ran out of, I would use the 90% confidence here instead of the 75 to purchase at that level. All you need to do here is to compare two Excel sheets using Python. I have examples of how we can compare two Excel sheets in other videos, and I'll link those in the description below. If your predicted consumption is higher than your inventory level, then that should trigger you to make a purchase order. Since I was only in this role for a few months before moving on to my next opportunity, there's a few things that I never got the chance to implement. But if you're trying to implement this yourself, I would encourage you to think about these. In this example, we started from the raw material consumption. The better way to use a machine learning algorithm to predict what levels you should purchase at is to look at the customer orders. When you look at these orders, you should try to predict the level that these orders will come in. Once you predict the orders that you will have, then you should relate them to a bill of materials and then purchase your raw materials by these. Another thing that we didn't cover in the script was the lead time of the raw materials. If your lead time is much longer, then we should have a way to trigger a PO to happen much more in advance. Unfortunately, this algorithm didn't take that into account. Thirdly, I mentioned it in the video, but a risk assessment was never done. So that means that we couldn't truly automate this system because we don't know what components we run out of in the algorithm. Lastly, the granularity of these calculations wasn't the best. In reality, if you're running a supply chain, you should have the lowest amount of granularity in your calculation. So that just means where I use monthly consumption because that's all I had. If you have daily consumption, then your algorithm will be much more exact. And that's all for this video. I'll link all the services that I used in the description below. Remember, if you want a full tutorial on how I did this step by step, leave a like on this video. If you have any questions or comments in the meantime, be sure to post them in the comments below. Until next time.